Insider's Roundtable, underwritten by Treetop, and by Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital, and by Thorner, Kennedy, and Gano, and by the Yakima Herald Republic. And good evening and welcome to Insider's Roundtable. I'm Heidi O'Malley. Despite a huge budget shortfall and no clear indication on how the state's budget will be balanced this year, uh, most of the news coming out of legis the legislature in Olympia so far has been centered on gay marriage. And uh, we too will join that debate tonight as Washington has recently uh, passed a law legalizing same-gender marriage. We are joined in our discussion tonight with two local, local pastors, Pastor Holland Lewis, um, currently with Life Shift Ministries and former uh, pastor at West Valley Nazarene Church in West Valley of Yakima, and along with Reverend Bill Poors. Um, you're a pastor of Yakima's Rainbow Cathedral Metropolitan Community Church, a division of United Church, Church of Christ. Christ. All right, we thank you for both for coming, and uh, you are both on either side of this issue. Uh, uh, Pastor Lewis, you are opposed um, to this legislation, and, and Reverend Poors, you you applaud this move. Um, let's let's begin with Pastor Lewis. Um, what are your concerns uh, about same gender marriage? Well, we have a new headline this morning that tells us we have a, a new direction uh, under our governor's signature. And I look at this this morning with a with a sense of appreciation for the gift of life. And um, I'm motivated by the sense of love. We happen to be taping on a day that's called Valentine's Day. So it's interesting, this really is about love, love between people. Mm -hmm. My perspective takes me to uh, divine leadership again. I have confidence in the Word of God that we call the Bible. And uh, God, from the earliest beginning, uh, began the process of building a beautiful relationship that we call marriage. And his perspective, as we start at the start of his book, says that he would create them male and female, and so he did. And then on to the next chapter, he sees man as being alone and needing someone suitable for him. And he created woman. We all pretty well know that story. And I love that word suitable because it addresses the relationship between man and wife, the ideal relationship. And it's God's idea, it's one of his best ideas, creating man and woman for each other to allow for the building of a love relationship. And then I see that carried out throughout scripture. I reference scripture today because that's where my confidence lies. I'm not a scientist. Uh, I like to think of myself as something of a theologian who has studied the word and has confidence in the word. So that was carried out. Jesus himself picked up on that idea in the Gospels, indicating to those who came to question him that God has created them male and female, and he talked about how they come together to build a strong relationship. So it's God's idea. I affirm that idea. It's where we get children. Uh, he created them uh, with exclusivity. I, I like the exclusiveness of the male and the female, their roles that are involved in marriage. Uh, they're built and designed in such a way that that uh, they are suitable for each other. Reverend Poirier, I'm sure you want to jump in. What, what about that um, do you disagree with? I disagree with, and I, I too will use scripture because scripture is uh, so uh, misunderstood. To study scripture, you've got to look at scripture three ways, theologically, literary, what literary composition it was, and the historical aspects of what time it was written, who it was written to, who wrote the scriptures, who interpreted the scripture. What, but a lot of what uh, the good pastor here is saying concerning in the early Bible, it was under the patriarchal uh, historical period where that the man was supreme and therefore the man would give himself more glory. I agree with him that, it, that, in, that in the Bible it says God created man and woman and he said that God created man from the earth which made 
in the literal interpretation of the patriarchal aspects that man came from God. Mm -hmm. And it said, then it goes, it says that God created woman from the rib of Adam, which now in the patriarchal sense says that the woman came from man. So therefore, she did not have the same standing with God as man had because she came from man. And that's why as you go on through the Old Testament, you found out that the woman became chattel. She was owned. She was property. And that's where a lot of the misunderstanding comes from is uh, that the woman became the man's. And therefore, if a man was with another man, it was like possessing her because when they had a relationship, mm -hmm. the woman became his property mm -hmm. and that he possessed her. And therefore, if they, he possessed man, he was possessing God and couldn't possess God. And you come on down to Jesus. Jesus only taught love. And he even referred to the various eunuchs of that day who, if you went by the law of the eunuchs, who were actually, some of them, homosexual. And if you refer to the ones who were castrated by man, they had no place in God's kingdom. They were outcasts. They couldn't even come into the temple by the law. Hmm. It's very deep, and I'm sure so many people have different interpretations, and, and both of you are very well scholared um, on this issue. Uh, but let's look at marriage once it became a, a government institution for the sake of legal property, raising children. Didn't it become, um, didn't it lose some of its religious structure? Well, we certainly uh, are not uh, in full tilt religious uh, culture. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have to have laws by which we're governed. Right. We have a law that is uh, attempting to get on the books now that mm -hmm. will kind of gauge what happens. My struggle is that throughout Scripture, uh, there was a maintenance of the concept through Jesus mm -hmm. and through Paul, uh, through the teachings of Scripture. There was the ongoing recognition of husband and wife relationship, male and female relationship. Mm -hmm. Also, which I did not mention earlier, I mean, it's pretty well understood mm -hmm. that um, when we say it's a boy and it's a girl at birth, we really mean something by that. Mm -hmm. And how do we get a boy or a girl? We get them through male-female relationship. Mm -hmm. I have high regard for that. I believe God had high regard for that. It continued. If you go on into the, into the epistles of Scripture, mm -hmm. you see it again. And absolutely, thank you, Bill, for referencing God as a God of love. And that's really the underlying factor in, in everything here. Sure. And uh, one of my great concerns, as we begin to look at the legal concerns, is that there not be hatred, that there not mm -hmm. be uh, vitriolic communication toward each other. Sure. One of the things that I find fault with in my own tradition mm -hmm. has been the frequency with which persons of what might be a con conservative Christian perspective have put uh, the gay community under attack. Mm -hmm. I won't go there. That's not mine. I love them. They mm -hmm. have loved me. Some of the greatest relationships I've had in life have, uh, I'm just meeting <laughs> Pastor Bill this morning, but some of the greatest relationships I've had in life have been with people who have been gay mm -hmm. in their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, they have come under my ministry. They have come into my friendship. They have acknowledged my love for them. So back to that word love again. I want it to guide us. And yes, indeed, the legal aspect has moved in, we've needed it. Mm -hmm. Because frankly, a lot of people have taken God's good idea of marriage and screwed that up, mm -hmm. messed it up terribly. <laughs> and I recognize that today, sure. it's a very sad thing. It is. So, so yes, uh, there, I, but none of that removes the God-given establishment of the male-female relationship. I recognize what the legal aspect is. Right, now I think most, people against this move are they're opposed to the traditional form of marriage being tinkered with and and since 2009 2009 Washington state has recognized um, same gender or unions in giving them every legal um, benefit except for that title of marriage so so why the need okay to... first I want to answer some of the things <laughs> that Holland had to say here I take odds with when it's referred to as a lifestyle. It's not a lifestyle, it's an orientation. I personally am a gay man. I knew when I was five years old that I preferred boys to girls. You may say, that's weird. No, I could tell you stories of what, why I know that to be true. Never in my life, even though I did because of religious norms, religious pressure, societal pressures, I did get married. 
and I have two beautiful children and five wonderful grandchildren. I thank God for that. But yet, to say that we as gay and lesbian, bisexuals, transgender, questioning, and intersex people cannot re reproduce is wrong. We can and we do. We don't have to go out and quote unquote recruit people because we can't have children. Well, there's so many of us that knows that we can't. And then when we look at traditional marriage, yes, traditionally marriage has been a religious thing, but from the onset of governmental directions and laws surrounding marriage and licenses of the marriage for the property, it has been not a religious move, but a civil move. And that's what we're discussing today. We're discussing a civil movement. Yes, we have a equal but separate, separate but equal type law in Washington. They had that with the blacks when they were, uh, and the uh, African Americans when they were seeking uh, equality, and it didn't work for them. It doesn't work for anybody. Separate but equal, equal requires that when a couple gets together under the uh, civil union laws uh, that so many states and so many religious organizations want to push, then they have to enter into a greater expense of having all kinds of multiple doc documents giving them those rights that other people get simply by a marriage license, which is a civil, a civil thing, not a religious thing. That marriage license allows that. I have been associated with and not in, we very recently had a case, I think it was in Seattle, where that a partner was not, a lesbian partner was not allowed to even visit her dying partner in the intensive care because, quote unquote, she wasn't family. Even with the civil... This was since 2009. Yeah, and even with the civil documents that they can still refuse on that basis. Mm -hmm. I have known many, many had a good friend who li who recently who was several, a few years ago I think it was back in uh, his uh, latter part of 2010 or first part of 2010 I don't remember exactly he had been with his partner for many many years and uh, they went through a civil union the whole works and they bought property property together and when uh, the partner older partner passed away from a heart condition the his family came in and took all of the property by law legally and put the other younger man onto the street, homeless, with nothing, all his life's work with this person gone. Hmm. And the thing is, separate but equal does not work. And that's what saying they got civil union. Let's call it that, not call it. Marriage is just a term. Mm -hmm. If you go all the way back and you want to go to where uh, Holland brought in, in those days they didn't have marriage ceremonies, period. You go to the Bible and read what the Bible says. It says he went in and knew her and was, had a relationship, sexual relationship with her, and she became his wife. Why do you think people opposed to this, some people, not everybody, um, feel like it's, it's, um, it's kind of forcing the issue of sexuality down their throats, quote, quote unquote? Why do you feel that they feel that hostileness? I, feel, I think it's because they just don't want to admit that we're there. If you don't know a homosexual, then it's easy to say they don't exist. In the 50s, before the Mattachine Society started, it was easy to say, well, we don't have any homosexuals. Cuba, look at Cuba. Years and years, Castro said, we don't have any homosexuals in Cuba. But yet they did. If you don't know them, they're not visible. Why is it that, and I hear this question, well, why do they have to be so open with their sexuality? Why do they have to flaunt it? Mm -hmm. Well, because of the fact that if we don't, we're beat down with it. We were beat for years and years at home. Even when I was a young man growing up, which led me to leave the South, if it had been discovered that I was gay, I could have been sent to prison for 20 years of life simply for being who God created me to be. What, what are your thoughts on the, that issue? Do you see this as being a, a hostile, um, creating a hostile environment to those who, who believe in traditional marriage? Well, there, it's obvious there's some hostility out there. I, I go back to uh, in, in Bill's own witness here today about his own life. I know that part of the debate is right there. Ed is a person born with this, and Bill has just said that this is a God-given thing. Is it, is it a person born with it, or is it acquired? And um, I don't know. I mm -hmm. tend to believe that there are tendencies and. Bill, of course, would take that much further. I tend to believe there are tendencies in us mm -hmm. that would lead us 
in interesting directions that are different from the tradition. Mm -hmm. But I happen to believe that about all areas of life. I believe that these, I had tendencies to take what didn't belong to me when I was a child. Others have trouble telling the truth. I'm working with someone right now who has great trouble telling the truth. So I, yes, I believe we are born with tendencies, but then I come back to the author of life and the author of uh, male and female, the author of how children are born, and I did hear your comment on that, Bill, but um, ultimately it becomes a heart, heart issue, and, and um, I know this can be, um, can, can be um, not very nice to some folk, but when I look at my relationships through the years, I have to tell you in all honesty that uh, I indicated earlier I've had some great friendships and I've seen life shift, life change that took place. Now someone may say, well, they didn't really have a true tendency, but I found myself in the midst of those in this particular direction of life who thanked me for mm -hmm. the role I played in their life. One of them, the, the, the best rebuke I ever received in my life came from a man who came out of the gay community, found his a new way of life, and he actually rebuked me for not being more open with him earlier. So mm -hmm. I've seen the life change. Does that happen to everybody? No. I've seen some go the other direction right. as well. I would respond to all of this. Number one, he's going to this um, idea that we are made and not created. <clears throat> more and more every day, scientists are proving through genetics and through the mapping of the genome, uh, DNA that it is a born with factor, something that's inalienable, which has guaranteed us those rights in our Constitution. It is also uh, the fact that when he talks about reparative therapy, it's amazing how many people have gone into reparative therapy. And for many years, they live this existence, mm -hmm. denying who they are, and even marrying and going, and, but eventually they turn back to it. Mm -hmm. If you go to Exodus, one of the biggest groups for reparative therapy, their, their, their leaders who extolled it so greatly finally were caught out in the bars living the life that they were meant to live, you see. And the thing is, I want to say one thing that we look at, we talk about how bad homosexuality is mm -hmm. and what a threat to marriage, traditional marriage it is. What about, let's get away from where Moses wrote about a man lying with another man or, and not eating shrimp, not eating the lobster, not touching a dead pig, which would kill football, you know, all that stuff. But we, we're gagging at this, as Jesus said, we're gagging at this gnat, but we're swallowing the camel on this. But the thing that threatens marriage and traditionality of marriage is adultery. And that's one of the big ten, thou shalt not commit adultery. But yet people of same-sex relationships are forced to commit adultery because we are not allowed to have the civil, civil given rights of marriage. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a, a little bit. Sweden and Norway, I think, are two of, of several countries who it's, gay marriage has been legal for, for a time. And uh, the latest studies say the, the babies being born now, the majority of babies being born in, in Norway and Sweden are born out of wedlock. Does that indicate? that um, the institution of marriage is collapsing no. in those countries. No. no. When you talk about out of wedlock, you're talking about out of a civil relationship. Right. Let's go back to what uh, Holland was quoting where it says, and he le the man left his family, came to his wife, and they too became one. I don't see nowhere in the garden there where that there was some preacher stood up there or some justice of the peace and said, do you, will you, why won't you, and why not? Okay, but yet, Marriage is not pinned necessarily on that piece of paper for the fact of marriage and the consummation of marriage and children to be born. It's okay. a person's willingness to be committed and stay together. That piece of paper we're talking about, the marriage license, is simply a civil document granting equal rights to all of God's good creation. Okay. Well, I believe that, um, <clears throat> I believe that um, a gay couple or a lazy lesbian couple certainly has love and nurture. Mm -hmm. I've met them. I know that they care deeply. I happen to believe, going back to divine design, that the, the, the closest to God's best idea for raising children provides a mother and a father for nurturing and caring. And um, 
I, I see the biblical model of that as being healthy for children. Can a person be raised and nurtured and loved in another type setting? Probably so. But do you think that over time that this will, um, you know, kids growing up, the, the teenagers of today, do you think that, that marriage is even something that they see as, as a goal for them? Well, I certainly think it's diminished in our culture today. So many things are. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're, it's hard for me to stay on one subject, sure. but this is our subject <laughs> right. because I see it overall. And uh, Bill mentioned adultery earlier. Mm -hmm. I do not make an exception in sin. Mm -hmm. I do not find myself in the crowd that looks at the homosexual and gay community and uh, points them out mm -hmm. as the supreme sin. I don't do that. Uh, I, I, again, I've said that I'm frustrated by what people in my tradition have done. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, uh, this will be confronted. But there are some in the gay community who have been kinder to me through the years, which I think demonstrates something of what my wife and I tried to do for them, mm -hmm. have been kinder to me than some within my own tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, only had one encounter, one encounter that was a little stiff, and that was when, as a teenager, uh, an individual approached me and sought to bring me into a relationship with them. And I, I, I didn't know much about that. And I was very firm in, in my response. Mm -hmm. That's it. And he, even he was kind at the conclusion. Mm -hmm. But that's the toughest I ever had to be. Otherwise, I found a kindness. I acknowledge that. Nonetheless, there is a, there is a, there is a heart issue here right. that I believe the author of life, the creator of life, brings to us. And when I... My concern in the law is that it does put a stamp of approval on that, which seems to make it an alternative to what I see as God's authorship for marriage. It puts a stamp of approval of on, on same-sex marriage, and I've already, you know where I am mm -hmm. on that, and I struggle with that. I don't, I'm not hating these people. I mm -hmm. don't dislike these people. And I believe the Christian community has often been given uh, that, that like name, mm -hmm. and properly so. Uh, I mean, properly so in that they have done it. I'm ashamed right. of that because people are people, and I love them, and God loves them, and loves the big deal here today. Right. I just want to say I came out of a very religion as a young man, similar to what Holland is from, and there are so much in those religions, guilt and put on people and so many you can'ts, you can'ts and, and so many blinders on people's eyes and going back to what he said, I get the sense that uh, through one of his statements that it was laying at the doorsteps of the uh, GBLTQI community the, down, the what could become a dissuasion to marriage mm -hmm. but yet when I counsel with young people who are contemplating marriage and we do have people in our church that are young that are heterosexual mm -hmm. and get married. I perform all kinds of weddings, hold a union, hold a unions and uh, open the door publicly or privately, whatever anybody wants is their preference. But I dwell on God's love for everybody. But to say when I counsel with them and I talk with them people who are living together, i.e. as we used to say down south, shacking up. Mm -hmm then I find that their problem is not coming because they're uh, gays and lesbians and bisexual, stranger or question, intersexual, that wants to get married. It's coming because they saw their mother and father being unfaithful to one another, or their mm -hmm. father being unfaithful to the mother, and the mother taking the biblical role of the wife being submitted to the husband and staying with him regardless of what he did. You see, the thing is, uh, he says he does not make a distinction of sins. Well, not necessarily is there a decision made, but I've known churches where even the elders of the churches who stood against so many things, even some of the elders were living together without being married because, quote unquote, if I got married, I'd have to give up my ex-husband's railroad retirement. Sure, sure. Let, right, me, <laughs> let me ask you, we're, we're almost out of time. Is there a concern that um, this being legal, does that open the door to the proverbial slippery slope argument, um, polygamist, uh, incestual relationship? I mean, what, what about that? I haven't thought that far. I mean, I think it opens the door to an alternative to God's plan for marriage. That's, uh -huh. that's my concern uh -huh. and puts a stamp of approval on it. That's uh, the reason I, I, I believe in the place for a referendum. Let me tell you why. Because I think this becomes a people's decision. Mm -hmm. Bill's, mine, 
yours. No, 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 and so I no, believe no, that the no, people no, 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 should have no, the opportunity no, no, no. now why, why to so speak be, into that. Why so no, vehemently because opposed. civil rights should never be voted on. In the early 60s, instead of the, our, our Congress of the United States passing the Civil Rights Law of 1964, if there had been a public vote on letting blacks and whites, or blacks have the same thing as whites, it would have never happened. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened with serving in the military. It took a presidential executive order. There is nowhere that civil rights should be voted on. Well, there is definitely an argument if, if this is civil rights or not, and, and we shall see what happens. Um, it will take 120,000 or more than 120,000 signatures by June 6th. Um, there might be two referendums. This is obviously a topic that will be discussed from now until November, I am sure. Um, so we shall see what happens. Um, one thing is, if a re referendum is passed, the legislature could come back with a two-thirds vote and, and make that decision. Um, and not only, not only that, let's look at California. They had the same thing. Now that has been definitely. declared unconstitutional. Why would we want people, and, and the thing that really grots me out about this, is all these people from outside of Washington uh, coming in with money in their mouths and all and pushing. Why should we let somebody outside Washington come here and tell we Washingtonians how to conduct our state, right. how to live in peace with everybody, how to be equal to everybody. Let's go back to the old hands-off Washington campaign. <laughs> Get your hands off Washington. Time. We're smart enough. That. We're smart <laughs> enough to make our own decisions. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, both. It's a very impassioned argument and one that could go on. No for place for hatred in while. any of this. Exactly. Uh, I'll wa walk away from the table today. Glad that I met Bill. Glad to meet you. All and right. we'll exchange prayer, and uh, life will go. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching. Insiders Roundtable, underwritten by Trita, and by. Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital, and by Thorner, Kennedy, and Gano, and by the Yakima Herald Republic.